on Country Squire Radio. We're back, baby. That's Ow! right. Squire Select. We're doing it upright. We got John David Cole fresh off the honeymoon with stories to tell. We've also got a <laughs> quick fire question uh, that, and pipe questions of the week all dealing with Lord of the Rings. Look, it, it's whiskey. It's Lord of the Rings. We got pipes. We got tobacco. We got everything you know and love happening right here on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD! Hey, Bo. Good evening, man. Man, good evening to you, sir. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great, man. I uh yeah, man, we um I'm married. Yeah. I, I'm married. Like I, I like I'm gonna leave here tonight and I'm gonna go home to my wife that that lives with me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and whereas before she was she was here during the recordings and giving you the loving eyes, I noticed she's not here tonight. Yeah, because she's she, she like, got well, what she was after. No, exactly. Now to get to see me, she's like, Well, forget this. Yeah. I'm gonna go home. Yeah, you know? she bought- <laughs> She bought the cow. That's right. Yeah. She she bought the cow. Yes, she she definitely bought the cow. Um, yeah, no, it, it's it's funny. She actually was uh, linking up with one of her friends tonight, but um, but but she uh, she was going to come tonight also. And uh, man, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. What a whirlwind, man. I mean, just can't even um, I can't even uh, you know, uh, voice just how moved we are. Gosh, the um, I, I guess it's the right time to talk about the the um, man, the tribute episode. Toasted, I mean, yeah, y'all, y'all toasted us That's and right. uh, and me and gosh, just listening and, and hearing from uh, folks like uh, gosh, John Fody, Dan Sanford, Portland Paul, Chase Abels, uh, the Maple City Pipecast. I mean, man, yeah. it was. I mean, I, I, like just just hearing all this and then you know, um, I don't I don't know for for my now bride and I, it was uh. Uh, just incredibly moving. It, it, it really was, and uh, man, I was so so thankful to to see that. It, it's it's cool to see the tentacles that our uh, <laughs> you know our our uh, our our online pipe community has uh, uh-huh. kind of branched out into. And uh, man, we're just we're just so thankful. You know, I, I got to give a little bit of credit to that show. Uh, of course, big ups to to all the members of the of the pipe club that were able to join. And, and I know a lot of folks wish they could, but but weren't available in the in the time slot we had. But I got to give big up big ups actually to uh, Charlie Bach, who it was actually okay, that was insane. Man, it was actually his that, that idea was insane to do the show. We to were, do it like that. So we were talking about it. And he was like, he's like, yeah, he's telling me like, you know, I actually I did the blasphemy the pilgrims. I want you to listen to it. We were in his car. He played it for me. I was like, man, this is excellent. He's it's like, really good. He's, I said, can I share it on the podcast? He's like, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd really like it to be kind of something special for John David. And I was like, ooh, a special podcast episode for John <laughs> David. <laughs> Ding. That's a way. To, yeah, there's there's some content for you, man. No, it was just awesome. If you um, of course, you know, I noticed in the show notes, and this was good. Like mm. you you said something like, look, if um, if this is your first Country Squire Radio episode, it's not. This yeah. is not the one. Like, the, the, <laughs> like, the, don't start here, yeah. right? Not a but good starting point. <laughs> but but if you're if you're a, a country squire radio you know listener and you're familiar with kind of our our culture and uh, stuff like that, man, it, it was just it was so great. I just yeah. felt uh, like so many pieces of our community were honored, and uh, and then man, Charlie bringing it in the clutch with uh with his new rock ballad. Uh, blaspheme the pilgrim first of all it was hilarious right and so he's got you know he, he's got uh you know the you know notes of me talking over the music about the pilgrim and kind of uh him coming in the pipe shop here and uh the you know just uh feelings that i'm feeling and all it that it's that just so well it, it's it's really really well but but then it's followed up by this just amazing rock like hard rock like it I, and I don't, I don't even know much about music but like charlie brought the metal man he just did like Dude. it like i i don't if you're into like if you're into heavy metal or you know rock operas or any of that kind of stuff like he's really good like i you know and, and charlie's an engineer like yeah. he, you know what i mean like he this is not something he does by trade but it, it's something that he just uh you know has fun with on the side he has found a lot of friends over the years that uh that also are musicians and uh, it's just kind of honed his craft, and man, this is something he does to have fun. And uh, dude, blaspheme the pilgrims, man! Super I, I want to see it on iTunes, baby. Oh, like I mean, we, we need to we need to get him a channel. I'm, look, I'm all for you know? that. He's got so he's got a SoundCloud uh, channel. It's great. We dude. really want to encourage you to check that out. And um, you know, Charlie is is wonderful. He's he's done a, a number of like inspired like rock ballads based off of different uh, different shows that I've worked on. And uh, you know, he's he is my go to man. Like it, and <laughs> if y'all have not checked out his work, y'all be sure to check him out on SoundCloud. And uh, again, thank you to everybody who was able to to join that. That was episode. awesome. And was also, awesome. we got to give a big thanks, of course, to Brian Levine who filled your shoes, dude. Uh, and you know, Brian, it, it's. Whenever there's a uh, a crossover moment between right. us and Pipes Magazine, I, 
I kind of feel like it's this really kind of special, unique. No, it is unicorn of a moment. It is. Yeah. And, and I, feel, I feel like all these really wonderful voices are coming together and it, it's uh, it is special. Well, yeah. the great thing is, is that, you know, you and Brian, you guys, you, you, you have both this like industry knowledge. You have, you know, this this unique kind of charm between the two of you. Uh, but me and Brian, we both are kind of like cynical guys. <laughs> I kind of felt like maybe our cynicism kind of came out, played Cr- out a little crotchety bit. old men. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. Was in that. But no, it's it's always That's a blast. fantastic. And I was uh, I was honored uh, to be able to, to to sit on mic with Brian and uh, you know obviously a a, a legend yeah. in, in the pipe industry yeah. and of course a a, a titan in the uh, in the the broadcast or or near, narrow cast whatever you want to call what we do yeah uh, but in the podcasting uh, tobacco world so uh, big ups to Brian and thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, that episode and yeah y'all y'all check out the Pipes Magazine podcast for for sure absolutely yeah big 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 shout out to him and and what he does over there all right a couple other kind of community shout outs too so i've i've mentioned this last couple episodes and um you know this this new game came out sea of thieves and i know that those of you who don't play video games are tired of me mentioning this but i got just got to give a shout out man we got this group that's been coming together called the squire scallywags this is fantastic it's been, it's been so much talk fun. about worlds colliding you know oh like, big time yeah th- these are these are folks that love and enjoy pipe tobacco and all things pipe and then and then this form yeah like, oh, I, I just I, I love the genesis of this man we got a whole crew together we had, we actually got a, a crew that's going out tonight uh, on a voyage on this uh this pirate video game uh we we also in the way this is <laughs> so funny i just gotta share this with you. <laughs> that's so, so great we named our ships after uh, uh tobacco blends from the country squad <laughs> So our, our our big vessel is the White Rose because you know right of course, of course it, it is. is the flagship exactly right? and then <laughs> then the sloop is the Florida League that hey that's good it works out well and then the other thing too is in this game when you're like working out your your um you're kind of like you know you got to hide your treasure so the other pirates don't steal it from right you. right well we realized as we were trying to escape this other ship that uh, this is me and Ed and and we were we were playing the game. <laughs> And we realized they could hear great. us. They could hear what we're saying. So if we say, like, hide the skull, then they know they're looking for a skull. If we say hide the chest, they know they're looking for a chest. So we started, like, let's say Latakia for skulls. And let's say <laughs> Virginia for t- for chests. So you've and got so all these pipe-related code words. All of these. Like, basically, if anybody's listening, we're just shipping tobacco. Hey, hey, did you take the Virginia back to the shop? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing, too, is, is this gunpowder you can yeah. use to blow up stuff, uh-huh. which we call Perique. We're like, hey. Uh, make that Perique delivery to uh, to the ship over there. <laughs> and then you just blow it up. Yeah, so be sure fun. to press it really hard. Yeah, that that'd be great. So if you do play this game, join that is the, funny, the, man. Uh, the Squire Scallywags on the on the uh, Xbox community. Uh, we'd love to it's have so you join out of us control. for some games. That's and great. If you do play the game and you just happen to hear some people talking tobacco, come say hi. That's us. That's literally no one else. In this game. <laughs> it cannot. There. It cannot be. <laughs> that's us. That's great, dude. Um, man, it just uh, do we have any more uh well, kind of. I did want to give one last shout out to yeah. um, to Matt Green. So Matt Green, a couple of weeks ago, he actually works for an organization called Pioneers, which oh, uh, yeah. helps bring the gospel around the world. Yeah, I remember you talking about this. Absolutely. Uh, Pioneers, they actually brought me in to, uh, to do a podcasting workshop with their organization. Great folks over there. And so anyway, um, they've got a, a podcast coming out hopefully very soon. And so we'll, we'll give uh, them a shout out as well. But Good. Uh, Matt Green, a great, faithful uh, Country Squire radio listener. And just wanted to, like I say, give the shout out to him, his organization. That's awesome. Be on the lookout for what, their what's their organization called? It's called Pioneers. Pioneers. Yeah, okay, great, absolutely. great. More info on that soon. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. So I, I have to I have to tell you a couple of quick stories uh, from uh, you know over the past couple of weeks. Um, of course, uh, you know, getting uh, it, my 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 wife and I we honeymooned in Mexico, right? Right. And, and, and you didn't want to tell anybody. We didn't. I was very I was very strict on that. Like I like <laughs> we told our parents the day after our wedding, like mm-hmm. where we were going. We handed them packets of like, okay, this is where we'll be if someone like has a problem, this is how you get in touch with us and this kind of thing. But like we, you know, my best friends and you and, you know, it, it, no one knew, right? No, no, one knew. no, no one knew. And it was, it was great. It was just a time to check out, but, um, I mean, it was so cool. You know, we went to, uh, this resort just North of Cancun, uh, one of those all inclusive things, you know, awesome where way they're, to do it. They're, they're just, they're constantly trying to refill your drink or like give you, yeah. uh, you know, Oh, you don't like that appetizer. We're here. Let me give you five more to try kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, here's, just, here's the filet, de ma- filet mignon on top of a filet mignon. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and trust me, I paid for it. Like, you know, <laughs> right, exactly. you're you not paying for it from. when it happens, but like, you know, yeah, up, up for, I was like, baby, please enjoy this. Cause we'll never do this. again. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I love the pipe industry, but it'll never pay for this. <laughs> um, no, it was, it was just so funny, you know, but it, it was, it was great. I, I had many nights where I was sitting there. Uh, the, the I took two tobaccos on the on the trip, and I only wound up smoking one of them. And um, and the one I wound up smoking uh, was was actually tobacco gifted me by Brian Levine. And uh, and it's a it's a Mac Baron Pure Virginia. 
uh, which is, of course, is one of my top five flakes. It's uh, just a great tobacco that I really love. And one that I think is overlooked a lot. It's one that uh, a lot of folks don't uh, really, um, you know, pay attention to. But, uh, man, I had many good nights with, like, uh, sitting uh, in, like, 70-degree weather, mm. holding a cocktail, mm. like, on this patio in on the Yucatan Peninsula, you know, ocean breeze, smoking my Stanwell with Brian Levine's tobacco and listening to a Beatles cover band that was all Mexican accents. <laughs> and it was fantastic. Brilliant. Like it, it was, if you can imagine like your favorite Beatles song, like anything from the white album or, you know, rubber soul or, you know, it, it, you pick it, but, but with this just crunchy Mexican accent, like it was, it was just excellent. That's it, brilliant. It, it, it was, it was so great. I can yeah. only imagine the Mexican Dave Matthews covers are even better. Yeah. I, they, probably would be it was it was so cool because they had all these uh you know different uh you know events and stuff for you and uh one of the most interesting things that i thought you may have actually heard of this Bo, but um have you ever heard of a quiet party where basically that the idea is they pass out these headphones right and there's no music at all so if you're sitting here watching this from a from a third person standpoint all you see is a bunch of idiots jumping around to silence, but everyone on the headphones are listening to the same music. Right, right, right. I'd never seen this before. It's pretty incredible. And actually, it's a, it was fantastic. In other, in other, it's not really, I don't think it's very big in America, although there might be some markets where it's kind of taken off. But yeah. There are even clubs like where you go in and it's just dude, silent unless you put on the headphones. Dude, I want to yeah. start this. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> right? I'm seriously like, it was so great because all these people at this resort, you know, um, you know, or sitting here where, you know, everyone's like got a drink, we're out in the ocean breeze and, and you're just, it's, it's just silence. And, and you're all sitting here watching this mosh pit of people just act a fool <laughs> and they're all listening to some, you know, awesome, you know, club music, but you can't hear it because it's on their headphones. Well, you know, eventually, uh, you know, Mrs. Cole and I, we were like, well, we've, we've got to do that. Right. I mean, <laughs> right. I, I, obviously right. we've got to do that. And so I, I put my pipe down and we, we walked over there and, uh, dude, it was great. We got to get that started in Jackson. I like that's that's a thing. Here's what we need to do. Uh, uh, Country Squire Radio Quiet Party. Hey, well, how about this? <laughs> you do this There's nothing with, quiet about us. Do this actually. with your local pipe community, uh, your local pipe club. Get Country Squire. You all press play at the same time. Listen to it. You're all in your shop together and you listen to Country Squire Radio. Yeah, but then, you know, th when we make a really lame joke, everyone in the shop at the same time will go like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you'll know. And that's how you'll know they're listening to. Country right, no, right. exactly, right, <laughs> exactly. Man, what, one other thing I, I just have to tell. This is yeah. this is um, by far the most unique wedding gift uh, that that we got, and I just have to share this. So, oh wow, wow. Uh, so, so uh, many of you, uh, of course, my my wife Nina, she uh, is very engaged in the coffee industry and Big time. Uh, knows it and loves it. She she roasts coffee and then also tries to keep her toes in the uh, barista ink just to you know keep that. Uh, warm. She manages a couple of coffee shops uh, or a coffee shop here in Jackson. She's done some great um, things for the local coffee. Community. She has. She's yeah. just, um, you know, I, I, I'm obviously very biased, but uh, she's fantastic. Um, anyway, so it, it was it was neat. We've got several friends that are like, wow, y'all are combining forces with this like, you know, this this addiction kind of thing right so so you've got you've got tobacco on one side you, you, the pipes on one side right and and, and, the, and then coffee caffeine on the other side so we had a lot of friends you know our wedding was like that we had uh you know on all the tables there were like cigar boxes and uh you know the uh, corn cob pipes and we had uh you know coffee beans laying around nina made a special coffee roast for our for our wedding oh, blend and so all that kind good, of stuff yeah. just really really cool anyway so we had we, we got this gift um and i've never this is from our friends uh I actually live in Canada, um, but uh, th this is this is really interesting. This this is called a this is called a bripe, a and bripe. It's a bripe, and it is a coffee brew pipe, and <laughs> and 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 this uh -huh. this thing is the perfect marriage. Uh, uh, supposedly, I haven't used it yet, but between a a, uh, a coffee lover and and the pipe enthusiast. Wait, are you supposed to? I'm, I'm, I, it looks amazing, but I've right, got right, so, so many questions. All right. So let, let me explain. We're going to try to describe it a little bit for right, our, right. uh, for our, our audio only listeners. So, uh, you know, you've got a copper pipe basically that's an Umpal design, very right. deep bend. Uh, and there's a, there's a cork around the, uh, shank of it, if you can call it a shank. Uh, and then there's a, um, the, uh, you know, a, just a very tall cylindrical bowl. Uh, and, and so what you actually do, it comes with this, uh, really fancy, uh, case that it was uh, it was uh, delivered with, and so the case is like you know all the expense that went into making this bribe like went into this case because right, right. this is like just you know really not not much of, of anything. It, it's got a torch lighter that comes with it that wow. you could like you know do uh, creme brulee with if you wanted to. Yeah, um, and then it's got all these little paraphernalia things. Is that like a test tube? 
it, it, it's like a test tube, and you can actually, uh, when when you're toting your bribe around in your in your carry ca- your bribe carry case, uh-huh. uh, then you can keep your coffee grounds in here. Oh. Um, so whenever you're ready for your bribe, uh, you, you'll be you'll be ready to go. So so the idea with the bribe, it, it's not it, it it is a pipe, but it's it's actually for consuming coffee. Okay, so you don't actually so you, smoke so you're not smoking okay. tobacco out of it. Although you probably could, we've got some creative individuals out there. But but the I, heat the i the idea is is you actually take this uh, this copper pipe and you you put your uh, coffee grounds down in it. It's got a little strainer thing uh, that that strains the grounds out. Uh, and then you once you get the right amount in there, you pour water in there. Uh, and then and then you take your torch and you torch the outside of the pipe. <laughs> And, to, and, and then you take your little thermometer. See, it comes with the thermometer. Uh-huh. And so you, you, you put your thermometer in there, and you make sure that it gets to 180 degrees uh, for about three minutes. Uh-huh. And, and then you take it out and stir it, and, and then you um, and, and then you, you smoke your bripe. And, but instead of smoking, you're just sucking through, through that. Th- this is a real product. Like someone, someone made this and, like, and, and, and is supposedly like paying their bills by selling this. Can I, can I just, this can is I, amazing. Can I just say something? I, I just look, I, we are very pro hipster culture. <laughs> and, I, and I mean that without that, there no, would be no us. No, you, you're true. We, yeah, we're, you're you're, you're right. Yeah. But, but can I just say <laughs> as, as hipsters, <laughs> there is a too far and that's it. We, I think we found it. I think we found it. I think it. we found that's, it. That's too far. It, it, it was just <laughs> a brilliant gift. It was just so funny. It, it was so funny. Like, this is so us. And it, it even comes with this little copper thing that you can uh, display your bripe on. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so you can put it uh, yeah, on, like on display. That. Actually, yeah. pipes should have something. No, they should like have a little, a little thing. A cool you design. can, uh, this little uh, stand that yeah. you can you can sit it on. But uh, yeah, so, so you've got your bripe. And it, it's just, it's basically a way to consume coffee. Uh, that looks uh, looks kind of like a pipe, and uh, you know. So if you're out in the woods camping or something, and you have coffee grounds and potable water, then uh, you can pretend like this is enjoyable. Yeah. Just- <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and and so you know, we would uh, we would really like to know. It was so funny. I was like, man, that is such a curiosity. Like when I. I, I was like, when I take that to the shop and, you know, put it on display up there, like people are really going to get a kick out of that. Uh-huh. And my wife looks at me and she's like, you're not going to take that to the shop. I'm going to use that. <laughs> and I was like, maybe once. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait to hear all of that. So, uh, so, so the, the, uh, the, the bribe, uh, from our, from our dear friends in Canada, we're with all these, uh, with all these out of control little uh, gizmos that go with it. Uh, pretty, pretty remarkable. Unbelievable. If, if you're a bribe user, please, uh, please let us know. Well, man, uh, we we've got. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to transition <laughs> from that. We've got a great show tonight. We, of course, uh, with you being uh, back on back on the show, the, the live show returning. Uh, what better way to maintain professionalism than to drink whiskey? And that's what we're going to do tonight <laughs> because it is a Squire Select episode. Ow! Now, for those who have never tuned in for a Squire Select episode, if this is your first uh, episode of Country Squire Radio or just your first Squire Select in general, uh, here's what we do. We like to take various uh, whiskeys, typically, although we'll, sometimes we'll do coffee, sometimes we'll do... Uh, done, done tea before. Done tea before, yeah. that sort of thing. But but mostly we do enjoy uh, uh, diving into the world of whiskey and pairing it up with some fine, fine tobacco. Now, tonight's kind of a special occasion. We've got a whiskey that has been graciously gifted to, to us specifically for the sampling and pairing. Yeah, and, it, and it's actually straight from the distillery. Straight from the distillery. Which, which is awesome. Yeah, listen. We made it, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, I know, right? Woo! I know. It's sold out, baby. <laughs> exactly. It finally happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, yeah, so so this is from Andy Tincher, and he is um, with Garrison Brothers Distillery. Um, in High Texas. High Texas is uh, right there in the. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, high Texas. High H Y E. I'm a, I'm assuming I'm saying that right. Oh, no, I, I could be saying I just it wrong. I didn't know but, if that meant like um, it was at the the top of the the stick. You know the hat thing that sticks on the. Top oh, the panhandle. Thing. Yeah. No, no, no. The panhandle goes below. No. I'm talking about. That that's the panhandle. That's the panhandle. I promise it's the it's the panhandle. I thought the panhandle implied because like, the panhandle of Florida is on the coast. It, that it, don't don't confuse down with panhandle. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my bad geography lessons with both well, in, in from mississippi right. education <laughs> right <laughs> that's exa- exactly right exactly right um man so so uh man just a beautiful bottle of garrison brothers uh whiskey of course this, this does come from our friend andy there and um man th- this is this is such a treat because this bottle right here it, this is not this is not old charter okay now, now, now let, let's be honest there's not many things that can take the place or be considered in the same realm as old charter, but th- I, I just want to make clear, like 
I just want to make clear, like this is this is not, you know, you know, even not bottom shelf, not even medium shelf whiskey. This is this is top shelf whiskey. Um, and it and it really is fantastic. I, we were so just so proud to get this. Dude, there's a and, little uh, thing that says like specifically for sampling, not for sale. This is like the premium stuff. No, it? it's it's the real deal. It, the real it's deal. it's the real deal. All yeah. Right. So um, so this is um, this is, uh, you know, it, it's it's the older it's, it's the oldest uh, whiskey distillery, legal whiskey distillery, uh, in the state of Texas. Um, and so it dates back to, if I'm believing, if I'm reading this correct, uh, to 2006. So, you know, we've kind of over the past, uh, several years here, we've had this kind of whiskey, uh, Renaissance, small batch craft stuff people are really embracing. And so, uh, you know, this, uh, kind of was at the forefront of that back in 2006. And, and um, it seems like even just in the last past year, the Texans have really gotten into this idea of like Texas whiskey. I think and so. Texas bourbon. Yeah. I mean, and, I, and carving out their own, their own thing. Yeah. Right? Trying to yeah. really make a name for it for sure. Yeah. Um, so just, just really, really wonderful, beautiful presentation, man. It's just so, uh, so gorgeous. This is the uh, Texas Straight Bourbon Whiskey 2016 small batch. Um, and uh, this was the first bourbon, actually, uh, that was stilled outside of Kentucky, Indiana, or Tennessee, which is kind of interesting. You know, you think about um, e there's this misconception with bourbon that, uh, you know, it has to be uh, what people always say. Oh, a bourbon is something that's uh, only uh, produced in Bourbon County, Kentucky. Right. Well, that that hadn't been true in a long time, if ever. It's like the um, champagne. People kind of yeah, equate people it to that. Like, equate it, I think, with that. But yeah. bourbon is just, uh, if I'm getting it correct, uh, you know, bourbon is is 51% corn based. That's right. Um, and so, you know, I guess there's just such a tradition of that in that part of the world uh, that you associate it with that. Of course, you know, Kentucky and um, you know, we think of, uh, you know, just all the great, uh, distilleries that are there, but, um, but this was the first one outside of those three States, Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee, uh, that, that actually made a bourbon in the United States. And so, um, they don't blend whiskeys at all. Everything they're making, uh, is not blended from other distilleries. It's made on site. And so what they do, they're getting raw ingredients from the farmer and they are making everything right there so that, you know, you're getting an extremely high end product here, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, so, um, we've got a, uh, it's a sweet mash that they use instead of a sour mash. And I think it really comes through, uh, when you try the whiskey, which, which we'll taste in a second here. Oh, my mouth is um, I know, man, it's, it's just so good. Uh, the, the uh, raw ingredients, uh, corn, wheat, and barley are used once. Uh, and, um, he says, you'll be able to taste these in the finished product, giving it a sweeter finish. Uh, and by the way, these ingredients are food grade organic grains, uh, unlike a lot of other distilleries that actually use cattle feed. And you think about this, that's amazing. Yeah. Like how much bourbon is consumed in America where it's been produced with, uh, with cattle feed, cattle in mind ingredients. I mean, very I American. Well, it, yeah, I know, right? But American yeah, I mean, I, I don't know a lot. Yeah. You know, we 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 by no means are experts on no. um, on, on beverages, and you know, we do this uh, for fun as kind of an armchair quarterback kind of thing. But um, but you know, you, you just think about how much bourbon is consumed probably in the world that is using cattle grade uh, grains, and of course, they are. Um, you know, they're not doing that, which is uh, which is pretty cool. It's got the premium um, stuff. He says, we distill off all the nasty chemicals, uh, the ones that give you a hangover. So those those ones that you're going to find in a really uh, inexpensive whiskey, you know, when you've had a little bit and you're like, oh, I just don't feel good. The, those kind of things are just um, just not there. This is a hangover proof bourbon. I, I didn't I didn't say that. I, I didn't say we but the, put that. To the I was about so. to say, but there is only one way to find out. That's right. Um, and um, it, the barrels are being aged a minimum for for four years, which is cool. I, now, I love this. This is uh, one of my favorite things that he uh, that he says, he says, um, our climate, uh, this is, of course, think central Texas is just west of Austin. Um, our climate is good, is both a blessing and a curse. Uh, with heat, you have expansion of, uh, the, uh, wood inside the barrel. Uh, and when the liquid expands, it penetrates the wood, giving the color, uh, and the flavor of the bourbon. And so, you know, when, when the, when the, when the whiskey goes into the barrel, it's clear, but, but, and a lot of people don't realize yeah, that, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's clear going into the barrel and the barrel is what gives it this, um, you know, this, this color and a lot of its flavor. Um, so when the liquid expands, it penetrates the wood, giving the color and flavor of the bourbon. We, we all know that, uh, because we're so hot down here in Texas, the liquid inside, uh, is going in and out of the wood constantly. So thinking about that expansion and contraction, you know, you've yeah, got uh, just kind of sloshing around in there. Um, however, with the heat, you also get what we call angel share. 
um, this is water and spirit evaporation that we lose. And so, you know, they, they actually lose some of that oh, due to yeah. evaporation. Yeah, yeah. And that, you know, the idea is, oh, well, the angels are, are taking their share of whiskey. <laughs> they, they call it the angel's share. And so I like that. Um, this is um, sometimes after four years, we've lost more than half of uh, of the, the, you know, the actual spirit wow. uh, that they put into the barrel. So what you're getting is so incredibly uh, refined and pure. It's just uh, just really neat. Uh, last thing I'll, I'll say about this, um, on the back of this, um, uh, of this, uh, you know, bottle, it, the, the distiller, the, the master distiller, uh, his name, oh. his name is, um, is Don, Donis Todd. Yeah. And he actually signs every one of these. Okay. Uh, I got it, excited thinking that was just for us. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 every, every one of for these. you, ladies and gentlemen, it's for you. And, and actually, and actually I, I'm, I'm mistaken. It's not Donna's Todd that, uh, that's the master. It's the owner, the owner, uh, Dan Garrison, uh, signs every single bottle, uh, that, that, that comes David out of Cole's there. And so, heart. uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, just, just imagine, uh, you know, get, bidding, uh, getting something that's this, um, this high end. And, and of course you've got the, uh, the owner of the company that, uh, is autographing it so uh really really cool man anyway we're gonna go ahead and crack this open i yes, know uh, we're tired of talking about it and want to uh mm -hmm. want to have some now before i drink this i should mention so i i used to be of kind of that uh i mean like you know it's not real bourbon unless it comes from kentucky you know like that right kind right. of in that yeah, kind of way until it was actually clyde mays that that made me sing a different song that, which is good whiskey in yeah. alabama yeah <laughs> so I, I, like, I know right yeah if, if alabama can get it right you right know, we'll, we'll see what texas <laughs> we'll see if we can uh, run off our friends from alabama once more which would not be a bad thing i mean let's be honest oh wow that's, <laughs> that's good man isn't that good it's got a little uh got a little bit of a um kind of a, a spice to it right there is a spice there's like a candied apple thing going on um it changes it it does change it's a um, think of, um, you know, this kind of butterscotch with, uh, caramel, but then it transforms into an earthy whiskey yeah. that you just don't really associate with, um, you know, it, something that is, t that is, you know, this sweet kind of off the bat, you well, know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost like you initially this, it's sweet, but it's, then you have this maltiness. It's kind of this, this smooth, like, Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah. We're here to party. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, going on, like, like you really do. You immediately get that smooth sweetness and then it does have kind of a, almost like a spicy heat kick on the back end. It's just really interesting. I, I, lo I love this whiskey. You can tell uh, immediately the complexity from it and just all the hard work that went into producing something like this. And so, um, man, just really, really fascinating. I, you know, I struggled with, um, I, I, I struggled with pairing this because, um, this is such a complex whiskey that is so, so good. Um, and it's one of those that, you know, you don't, if you pair it with something of similar notes, you're going to in some way overpower it. Right. Right. And so, you, you know, the goal here is not to overpower this. We want to, um, you know, accent it, complement it, uh, and, and, you know, bring out, uh, the, the finer notes of the experience to make it more, more enjoyable. So, um, so I picked one of the highest grade Virginias that, that I know, um, that's mellow and bold and, and, and really good, but just very straightforward. Okay. Uh, and this, this is a capstan, uh, original Navy cut. Uh, this is a flake tobacco, very, yeah. very popular tobacco. It comes in a little blue, uh, square tin. It's one of the last square tins you can get. I'm sure at one point, uh, at some point this will uh, be a thing of the past entirely. I mean, but it does have kind of a classic style. Just a real classic yeah. look. My, um, my understanding is this is the brand that, uh, J that J.R.R. Tolkien actually smoked, um, oh, which, which gives it on its own a lot of veneration, you know, yeah. it's just a really, uh, really beautiful, but, um, but Capstan is, uh, it, it's a, it's a very straightforward Virginia blend. You've got, uh, just, uh, sugars that are very apparent, but not overwhelming. Um, it's very high quality tobacco. Of course, uh, the beautiful, uh, you know, broken or cut flakes that are already kind of in the, uh, in the tin there, they really, uh, you know, what you'd expect from a very high grade Virginia, but this is a, it's a tobacco that, uh, you know, a lot of people know and love and, and that's for a good reason, you know, uh, Capstan has been around for, uh, decades and, uh, was, was reformulated at one point and brought back to market. But, um, but this is such a good pair. I'm, I'm smoking it tonight actually, uh, with this, with this, uh, whiskey because it is, um, it, it, it is delicious and flavorful, but it's very straightforward. It's not something that's going to argue with or combat, be combative with the flavors of the um, uh, of the Garrison Brothers uh, whiskey. And so, uh, just really was really proud of this. I think it's a uh, I think it's a good pairing. 
and um, man, I you know, uh, and a top shelf tobacco to go with a uh, a top shelf, a truly top shelf whiskey. Plus, you got so, that kind of ketchupy uh, tin note going. You have on. a little bit of that. Yeah, we gotta yeah. have that. You got the you got the Texas now. You got a little bit of that uh, ketchup going on your uh, you know your burger or something of that nature. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, just so good, man. We're we're really grateful to Andy and uh, the folks at Garrison Brothers mm-hmm. for for sending that to us. So really yeah. really good. Check them out. It's yep. uh, it's it's very 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 tasty. And uh, now you know exactly what to smoke when you get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's our first one. Second up, this is a distillery that I've actually had um, had some before, although I have not had their rye whiskey, which is which is what uh, what we have tonight. Uh, this is from the Koval Distillery. Mm-hmm. Uh, Koval, this is uh, it's it's labeled as Chicago's first distillery uh, since the mid 1800s, and so we've got a whiskey here that um, is is really good. It's uh, you know priced at that kind of um, if I'm remembering correctly, kind of at that. Uh, you know, thirty to forty dollar range. This one was around um, the fifty dollars. Was okay. So th- this this one's a little a little more expensive, but it's um you know definitely not um not something that uh you know is gonna equal a car payment. But th- this is not you know this is not wild turkey kind of thing. You know, I mean you're you're <laughs> you're, you're, you're moving up in the world. Yeah, a we're, bit we're here. trying. We're you know we're trying to move up in the world, but no, keep right. it in the price range. Right. You know? No, that's it. That's it. <laughs> um. So Chicago's first distillery since the mid eighteen hundreds. Koval. Um, it's just, uh, you know, real, real clean whiskey. All they, everything they use, of course, is food grade organic, uh, products. And they're similar to the Garrison brothers in that, um, you know, everything that you're doing here, it's actually coming from, um, from that distillery. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, you're, they, they basically take control of the process after the farm. And so they select a local farmer to grow the grain. Uh, they're taking that, um, and every bit of the milling, mashing, distilling, and bottling uh, it goes um, on at that one factory. So, uh, just you know, you're you're getting it from um, you know from one source, which is kind of cool. You know, it's a high end whiskey when you when you do that. So, uh, Koval, interestingly enough, it's uh, it's Yiddish for black sheep, um, which is kind of kind of neat. Of course, the black sheep you think of someone that kind of uh, goes their own way, yeah. takes their own path, kind of thing, and um, and it, so just kind of an interesting. Uh, thing there. I wonder if that's like personal to the founders or if they're making the declaration upon the whiskey world. You know, I I, I think it's probably some of both, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you would think if you're going to choose a Yiddish word to, um, you know, it, it, you know, to be the name of your company, you probably have some pretty, pretty good reasons for doing that. Interesting. So, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's um, so, so kind of, kind of neat. Um, uh, these are all aged in new American oak barrels from, uh, from Minnesota. And so, uh, you know, that oak, that new oak, it's imparting all this real, uh, particular flavor in there. Um, and the rye, this is interesting. It, 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 this is from the wall street journal actually says, uh, despite being a hundred percent rye grain, uh, this whiskey, uh, is fresh and light with a mapley candy corn, uh, entry and a kiss of spice on the finish. And so, um, it's a very light whiskey. I thought, uh, I, I thought it was one of those whiskeys that, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not super complex, but, uh, it's one of those that, um, you know, it, it's, a uh, very, very sippable. I, I enjoyed it. I, um, you know, this actually came from Bo's uh, private collection, and I, uh, I think uh, by looking at his at his face, uh, he didn't particularly enjoy it. But I, I thought it was a great whiskey. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's take a sip of it so I can refresh my memory. <laughs> but there's a reason it's here. Cheers. Uh, okay. <laughs> that 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 just audible disgust that you. Uh, yeah, that that you that you verbalize there. So it's it's interesting actually, like drinking these two whiskeys like one after the other because there is that spice kick with the Texan, whereas in the Chicago in here is just like all like phoning it in, in my opinion. <laughs> um, like I'm I'm not I'm not a huge fan of this. You can tell there's like way more wheat than needs to be involved, and at least for me personally, I'm much more of a bourbon drinker. I like to know that there's a good healthy bit of corn. You know, we actually um, I believe we were actually gifted a whiskey a while back that it was as bourbon as it possibly could be, but like just barely, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was one of these things where just like one percentage less and it wouldn't yeah. qualify as bourbon and, and it, it wouldn't really yeah. made it more of like a wheat drink. Sure. And that was one of the first times that my palate really defined, Oh, this taste is like, is associated with wheat. Yeah. This taste is associated with corn. I like corn. I do not like wheat. Yeah. And yeah. so interesting. Yeah. So you, this one very much has that kind of, I, I don't know any other way to say it, but that, that weedy flavor to it. Yeah. Um, it is, you know, it is, it is a smooth whiskey. I mean, it's a rye, uh, but that's the other thing too. I've had rye whiskeys that have a good, strong kick to them. And I just do not get it, get that from this whiskey. Now, that being said, as you mentioned, this is from my private stock. 
and it is mostly drinking. So I'm not saying that it's undrinkable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I was about to say, like, man, you, you didn't like this whiskey yeah. because uh, three quarters of it is, uh, yeah. is, is gone. Well, that, that <laughs> final quarter can stay here and I'll I'll, uh, I'll put it up as a sacrifice. That's not the angel spot. share. That's the uh, John David share. Yeah, that's right. Right. That's right. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah. But that being said, I was kind of curious. I was like, I wonder what direction john david would take this in a squire select well it's it's fascinating because this is a this is a light whiskey it's a rye but it doesn't have uh for me anyway a lot of the bite that uh i associate with rye whiskey right and, and and so there's a simplicity here um that i think is uh is is noticeable um and and notable uh so we're kind of doing the opposite on on this one right yes. so so with the uh, I like with the, the north and south thing we got going too yeah yeah you like that the <laughs> yeah. except for the southern panhandle that doesn't exist yeah, right no, that no, that no. one right yeah. um but the um yeah so so you know with uh, with the garrison brothers you've got bold rich flavors lots of complexity we're looking for something that's uh really tasty but very simple um and we're kind of looking for the opposite here with the koval so um you know i wanted something that uh, would bring out flavors that maybe were more ethereal that you weren't uh, expecting. Mm. Uh, something that was more complex that might uh, pay, you know, play off parts of your tongue that uh, that weren't necessarily stroked by the Koval, but um, you know, but but the the start of it was there. You know, maybe the seeds of it were there. Okay, all right. Um, which I and and again, I really like this whiskey. I think it's uh, I think it's very tasty. Both of these are are sipping whiskeys. These are not whiskeys that you're gonna you know mix with a Dr Pepper oh, no. or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. that's not something you're gonna and do. I, so. For the most part, we try to bring that to a Squire. Yeah, no, that's that's right. Except for that old charter. Yeah. Um. And so um. So tonight, uh, of course, one of our one of our favorite manufacturers in the in the pipe smoking, uh, pipe make pipe tobacco world, uh, Cornell and Deal. Uh, this is a very uh, very venerated tobacco. This is Epiphany uh, from Cornell and Deal, and uh, the Epiphany's been around a while. This was uh, their clone of uh, Revelation. Uh, which is the tobacco that was smoked by Albert Einstein. Yeah, and 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 so they, um, you know, came up with Epiphany kind of in <laughs> honor of that. And uh, that's clever. Yeah. It really, really good. Yeah. Um, and have I told you? Have I told you or our listeners about the time I smoked uh, actual Revelation? No, if it, if you did, it's been a long time. Uh, okay, I guess I guess so. Yeah, but it, it was a terrifying experience because the tobacco was so old and it was stored very poorly. We'll we'll talk about it at some point. Mm. But um, anyway, um. But this uh, this is very good tobacco. It's reminiscent, it says on the back of the tin, of the original revelation uh, said to be the favorite of Albert Einstein. Mm. This singularly uh, is an adroit melding of Virginia's, Burley's, Latakia, and Perique in unified harmony. And so you've got a lot going on here with um, with the epiphany. And, and you know, I, to me, it made sense to pair it with something as kind of simple as the Koval rye. Yeah. Uh, because you could kind of, uh, you, you know, you had a lot of flavors, so you're constantly pairing, uh, maybe playing off some of those different flavors. You know, sometimes the Perique is very forward. You'll hit that one leaf of Latakia that kind of sparks your tongue and like, ooh, I haven't tasted that in a few puffs. Um, you know, and so it just kind of uh, constantly keeps you guessing. I, I thought this was a fun tobacco to pair uh, with with a very straightforward uh, wh whiskey. No, I get it. This is like your really nice spicy meat sauce that would go over your very bland pasta. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I, I there you the, go. I re the yeah. pairing makes sense to me. Yeah, no, it, it's it's good. I, I actually really like this. Uh, really Epiphany like smells amazing. Um, by the way. And it, and it's it's good stuff. Yeah, it 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 is. Um, uh, Albert Einstein, of course. Um, we all know who that is. But um, you know, he uh, shopped. I, I don't know the name of the store, but it was in uh, Princeton, New Jersey. Of course, he was a professor at Princeton uh, in his last days there. And um, it, it, several years ago, someone got a hold of some of the last revelation that was procured for that shop which means that you know that was some of the last revelation that they bought at that shop and huh. had in stock at that shop probably to sell to albert einstein which is kind of interesting wow um, he was keeping him in business <laughs> right no it probably probably so you know yeah and uh and, and so anyway so they divvied up a few tens of this and 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 uh and and you know pass it around and we actually at the squire we got our hands on some of this stuff and um, it was really cool. We closed the shop down early one night. We all, some members members of our pipe club sat in the back of the shop. And, you know, we all loaded our pipes at the same time. We were so excited because, oh, here we are smoking this 60-year-old tobacco. Right. Uh, you know, it literally is 60 years old. And, uh, you know, it, uh, it we're, we're all just eager with anticipation. What is this going to taste like? And, oh, you know, we're kind of, you know, communing with uh, one of the most legendary uh, people in the history of man and all this stuff. And, and, and so we all load our pipes, we, we light it and we start smoking it. And, and, and there's just kind of silence in the room and we're all kind of looking at each other. 
and 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 then eventually did, did you have an epiphany and and and, <laughs> and 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 then eventually i think i was the first one to say uh, to to pipe up but i i said um it it burns a little hot. <laughs> it, it, it it burns a little hot, and and then that was the that was the the floodgates at that point were open. I kind of by saying that just it kind of revelation. yeah it kind of uh, it kind of let the let the guard down so everyone could just uh, just go into it. But uh, yeah, it, it the the tobacco apparently the tin it was stored in. It, the tobacco tasted like aluminum. Like if you could if you could Ooh. imagine smoking aluminum, ah. like aluminum mixed with like honey that was a few years past its prime, like, like that was, that was what it tasted like. So, so we still have that revelation. It's in the shop and, uh, and we have it under the cabinet over there that, so people can smell it if they want to, but, Ugh. but I don't recommend trying it because it, uh, it may, uh, give you brain cancer. Yeah. yeah. Pick up the epiphany. Right. <laughs> Pick up the epiphany instead. And try it with, uh, That's right. With very business. good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. We love, uh, we love Cornell and Deal's uh, iteration of it. Hey, speaking of people we love, man, as I understand it, you had a special visitor come by the shop. Dude, of course, you know, this is always the uh, time of the show. We talk about our good friends at at, um, at Missouri Mearsham. That's right. And uh, it was so funny. It was a really slow day here at the Country Squire today, I'm, which I was actually kind of thankful for. Right? People knew you were back um, in town. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Like, we're going to give them a few days off. Right. Yeah. It, it was it was neat because, you know, being back in town, I've had a lot of uh, paperwork to catch up on just, uh, you know, the unglamorous part of owning and running a, a small business. And um, and so, you know, the the few slow days we've had, it's actually been kind of enjoyable. Right. So I'm, I'm over here. I'm paying some bills and catching up on some uh, bookkeeping related stuff. And um, and, and, and the little door jingles uh, here at the shop. And so I look up. And it's Dan Nimitz. And Dan, of course, is uh, is just such a great uh, friend, not only of uh, Country Squire Radio, but also our shop, but is is just a really uh, well-known personality figure uh, entrepreneur in the pipe community and, and, and certainly in the American uh, market. Man, we're just so happy to see Dan. It was uh, it was really cool. He, totally unannounced, uh, completely by surprise, Dan uh, he was um, uh, coming back from New Orleans where him and a buddy of his had spent a few days, uh, you know, kind of hanging out, getting the the flavor of that town. And um, it, they, they were on their way back. And he was like, I'm going to pop in and, and surprise John David. Now, Man. And of course, Dan, we're in all the same groups online. We know each other through, uh, you know, all these uh, constant connections that we get through the pipe community. Uh, but we've only met each other in person maybe two or three times, you know, just at various pipe shows and and things like that. But good good friend and uh, certainly just a real uh, incredible cheerleader for the pipe smoking community. Um, works at Missouri Mearsham. He started his own company years ago, uh, AmericanPipeMakers.com, which, uh, of course, is where you can go. And, uh, yeah. and, and he brokers, essentially, for uh, some of the uh, best American pipe carvers. And yeah. so you can go there and find some of your uh, favorite American pipe carvers. You know, they they feature their pipes on his website which is uh which is really good but um anyway for about a year uh dan has worked uh, at missouri mirisham he's such a great fit for that company and the culture up there of course you know we talk on and on about uh about missouri mirisham and I, I was laughing with dan today you know we were talking about uh you know it the the awesome pairing of when you find a, a company that you don't just believe in the products but you really believe in the people that puts them over the other guy. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. the, 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 the fun thing about that is, you know, you, you're, you're constantly wanting to support people that, uh, that you love, um, and, and that you, that you work with that are just kind, genuine people. And, and of course we talk about friends in the industry that are, that are like that. And the folks at Missouri Mearsham, of course, have that in spades. And, um, and, and so it was just really, uh, really precious to have Dan in, man. It was such a surprise. And, uh, I mean, it was just great. He spent a couple hours here, man. We just talked, uh, pipe shop, you know, talk and Missouri Mearsham. It was so cool. He's uh, in the process of kind of curating. I mean, this is a next year is 150 years of Missouri Mearsham. Is that right? History. And so, you know, they're, of course, they're, uh, oh, you know, man. Uh, you know, just such an incredibly iconic uh, thing, not just in American pipe smoking, but just just pipe smoking. I mean, you got to think about the history that goes into that. And 150 years and it's had a bunch of owners and uh, different, uh, you know, it, dog legs here and there as far as the direction the company went in. But uh, man, Missouri Mearsham, it's a it's a legend. Right. And, and so uh, he is in the process of going through all their old archives, all their old memorabilia. I mean, stuff that's been lost for literally 60, 78 years. I'm sure it's amazing. And, and he's finding this stuff yeah. and, and is kind of curating it. You know, he's a romantic like we are. And so he's uh, looking for uh, the stories involved and uh, why things are the way they were and all these kind of things. And uh, it, it's just going to be really fun to see uh, over the next couple of years how 
uh, Missouri Mearsham with Dan involved, I think, uh, blossoms uh, even more than they already have. Yeah, so uh, awesome. anyway, it's so cool to have uh, to have Dan in the shop. And of course, uh, we love Missouri Mearsham. Talk about him constantly, and that's not just because uh, we like them, but we uh, we, we like also we also we also believe in them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We like the people. Yeah. We love the products. And by the way, if you've got a Missouri Mearsham pipe this week, be sure to smoke it, take a picture of yourself, tweet it out. We love to retweet those. It's a great way to let the good folks at Missouri Missouri Mearsham know that you we appreciate them for sponsoring this show pipe question of the week all right so pipe question of the week this week comes in from <laughs> listener Corey. i love this question yeah, yeah he yeah. says uh, i'm a huge lord of the rings fan can you talk a bit about how these <laughs> books and movies have impacted the pipe culture and business what a great question yeah this is this is interesting and this is one of those questions that cuts uh both ways i know we have a long show tonight so i, yeah, I don't want to go too too much into we could this, almost do an entire show on this one we, we really like, could and maybe at some point we we should but um so you know there's this in the in the pipe nerd community um which you know we're both a part of and, and are thankful for um th there's this kind of love hate relationship <laughs> with with uh all things tolkien right right, right. so we uh in those of us that are in the industry we uh we get tired sometimes of hearing about the tolkien related things uh, you know, because the people that orig originally come in uh, looking for those products, they want the uh, they want the Gandalf pipe. Yeah. They you know, and 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 that's all they even know. Um, you know, but the the thing about it is that the that has been the gateway. And and again, th this these these words are coming from you and I both, who are very much into the whole Tolkien. Absolutely, like we we we're all about that, right? But you know, it's just one of those things we hear kind of over and over. So it's like, oh, I want a Gandalf pipe. Well, okay, it's it's called a church warden, but what you know, we can talk about that. But but the thing about it is, um, Peter Jackson <laughs> has has brought. Um, uh, just an entire new generation into pipe smoking, and we need to acknowledge that. Yeah, I, I really, I really think we do. Of course, uh, Tolkien himself, a pipe enthusiast, uh, one of the we talked about the capstan earlier. Um, you know, in uh, you know, tobaccos, of course, that he was uh, was featured kind of through, uh, you know, through his different uh novels and whatnot. Actually, I I, I won't announce it tonight, but we uh, in the very near future uh, expect uh, something Tolkien related to come uh, from the country's choir. <laughs> Uh, which were very talking uh, related. We hear too much of it. By the way, we got something new. Talking but, you know, exa exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> well, it, it, it's I'll just I'll tease it out with this. Uh, this is a, a good tease. Is it but, precious? Um, it, it is. It is precious. <laughs> it is precious. But, uh, you know, we have uh, over the past few years developed a, a blend Green Dragon. Right. It, of course, was very popular, and it got caught up in the Great Virginia Crisis of 2018. Oh, yeah. And so we've been working on a bunch of different uh, blends to, you know, hoping to get close. Uh huh. And and this is not. This is just not Green Dragon, but we think it's just as good. It's just different. Interesting. And I'm so, really and, and so, it's got similar ingredients, uh, Virginia with a dash of Burley. Uh, but, but it's something that uh, you know we just uh, you know just just didn't want to call Green Dragon because it's different enough. So we think it can stand on its own. And uh, and so this will be coming out very soon. I can't so, wait. Man. But but you know, so going back to the question, right? Yeah. The, um, you know, the Tolkien stuff as far as the industry goes, it. I mean, the people that literally the the night of the Hobbit, they were lining up outside the movie theater. You know, before they went to the movie theater, they came by the Country Squire to right. buy their Gandalf pipe. When, mm. And you know what? Well, a lot of those people came back, and a lot of those people now they don't smoke church warden pipes. And 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 if they do, then maybe they're more interested in um, you know, different blends that they would have thought of before. You know, um, and and so it's it's kind of been this interesting thing. Yeah, you know, some of the old guard folks might kind of roll their eyes when they hear folks talking about you know long bottom leaf and uh, you know smoking with uh, Bilbo and all this stuff. But 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 you know, there's been a resurgence in pipe smoking, and I think we um, I think we you know can can point to uh, some of the Tolkien uh, mania over the past twenty years uh, it, it, as part of that. And so uh, we're thankful for it, you know. And, and I, I think we have a lot of new pipe smokers to point to uh, because of that. Yeah, and, I, and I'll yeah. even I'll even share this with you. I can pull the curtain back a little bit. But when um, when the last of the Hobbit movies were coming out, uh, or maybe it's the last of the Lord of the Rings movies. We've been doing this show, <laughs> this show long enough. I, I, mean, I know, right? I think it was like when the when the Hobbit movies were going on. Yeah, yeah. We even kind of talked amongst ourselves. We're like, you know, once these Hobbit movies are going on, I mean that that whole uh, spotlight in pop culture of pipes and pipe smoking right. is gonna like you know that, it'll it'll it's fade, huge, but it's, it'll it'll fade. And, right. and 
I thought that it would make a lot of sense to point out that actually there there's the pipe has been in pop culture. And not only that, there's an entire pipe culture that surrounds that. And so that discussion led to what has become our pipe culture series. It's true. It's yeah. Specifically no, you're because absolutely we right. Yeah. Thinking about life after uh, life after Peter Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, so we were kind of, you know, contemplating that and, and trying to learn well, what is pipe culture? Well, maybe we can define it with the audience. Maybe we can kind of figure this out. And so um, just kind of an, an interesting little uh, fact that Lord of the Rings and, and the impact yeah. it had on, pop culture and pipe culture led, yeah in fact to the pipe culture series that that uh, uh hopefully many of you have been able to experience on the uh, country squire radio podcast yeah it's good yeah it's absolutely good. well great question uh thank you so much Corey, for that question hey, and if you've got a pipe question of the week please send it in show at country squire radio.com quick fire quest jones Ow! all right man quick fire questions brought to us by the tin society more on that awesome service and just love the folks at the tin society all right so this one man is uh we got we got some pipe questions in from two different folks we got asa and rob all right okay yeah all right, all right. good okay. deal so okay. so these first two are from asa are you ready uh yeah rancher blue cheese specifically with buffalo wings uh blue cheese Ooh. uh no uh well, really yeah i'm not a blue cheese guy I, weird it's weird it's what the heck's wrong with you? No it, blue cheese with uh, buffalo wing? I just don't like the flavor. And then you think about the fact that it's all moldy. And like, I just, it's not. Man, well, yes, it is. No, it, like, I mean, no that's it, quite it, it literally is. what that's, it is. That's literally part of your. No, you're, you're correct. But dude, yeah, blue cheese all the way. Now, I've, I've had like. I love the tang of blue cheese, you mm -hmm. know, and how it, you know, it, you, how it uh, plays off the heat. I, I'll, admittedly, it's one of those flavors that I don't like, but I have a feeling if you I wish you did. Well, I try it enough and I <laughs> probably end up appreciating it. Right. Uh, soda, pop or Coke? Uh, when referring to the uh, carbonated beverage, when you're, when we're when referring to carbonated beverages, yeah, uh, soda pop or Coke, um, it traditionally in the South, we refer to all of these things as Coke. Cokes. And so everything just Coke. the brand itself or just, the, you know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want a Coke? Well, yeah. I want yeah. a Coke. Well, what kind of Coke you want? You want a Sprite? You want a Dr. Pepper? You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, I, you know, that, yeah. that's a thing down here. Um, I, I, more and more because we sell drinks at the shop. Right. Uh, I've been referring to drinks like that more often as a soda. Right. Re pop recently. Is weird. Right? Recently. Yeah. Pop. I just, you know, that's a, I feel like that's kind of a Midwest thing. Uh, we've never, we just, that's twist. never been a thing here. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, either soda or Coke, but, uh, but nowadays I'll probably lean towards, uh, towards, towards soda. Man, they got this, they got this, uh, Coke up in, uh, up in Grand Rapids. <laughs> they got this kind of Coke up in Grand Rapids. No, it's but, called Dr. Pepper. No, they call it Squirt. <laughs> They call it squirt. They like you want to. No, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. They sell name. that elsewhere. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. No, you know you won't drink that. I do not want to squirt. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, so these next ones, and I'm I'm with you on uh, on Coke or soda. Uh, I can go that route. Uh, these next two are from Rob. Okay. He says, uh, automatic watch or a quartz watch. Uh, is automatic? I guess. I think I think quartz is that is is automatic the one with the battery? I think yeah. I think that's the one where like they show you the numbers, whereas the quartz is like a. No, no, no that that's right? digital and analog. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you, you I, I well, failed geography. That, yeah, I was about to say you, you <laughs> failed watch manufacturing. You find you find the uh, the automatic watch that shows the uh, the numbers. <laughs> that's in the pan. That's in the southern panhandle of Texas. That's the southern panhandle. That's a uh, Texas is southern panhandle. Yeah, I got that, it. That's right. That's yeah. great. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say quartz. You can say automatic, and then finally free weights <laughs> or machines. Uh, free weights. Yeah, machines all the way. Free free weights are cool, but I'm just not. I can't. Well, my free weights look so small. <laughs> and 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 the, the funny thing about this question is, of course, you know, we answered it so quickly, and yet Bo and I obviously are not very acquainted with either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. I mean, let's just be honest. No, I, I use I do use the uh, the the stairmaster. <laughs> You know, wow! No, no, that's not what it's called. But the thing where it's like you're walking. No, that's a stairmaster. It's, okay. You, you you pay you pay someone money to go into their air conditioned space to walk upstairs. I I I also run in their air conditioned track. Thank you very much. In circles, and yes, I do pay money for that. I expect good good content to come from this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Great quick fire questions. Absolutely. And of course, <laughs> quick fire questions are sponsored by the good folks at the Tin Society. Yes. Curated pipe tobaccos delivered to your door on a monthly basis. If you haven't checked out tinsociety.com, you absolutely should. Now, we've talked about some tobaccos here tonight, and every single Squire Select, every single tobacco talk, in fact, almost every single episode of Country Squire Radio, you're going to hear about a lot of different pipe tobaccos. That's right. But what we like might not be what you like, and what you like might not be what we like. Everybody's got different tastes, flavors, palates, things that they are looking 
looking for. And yes, I just said that in kind of a weird way, but the point is <laughs> with the Tin Society, you get the opportunity to really expand your palate by tasting a lot of different tobaccos that are picked out directly for you and delivered to your door. And that way, you know, hey, I like this. I'm going to go buy a tin. Or hey, I don't like this. I ain't going to waste my money. So check about <laughs> tinsociety.com. It's such a great service because you really do get the opportunity to sample some of the best and finest tobaccos um, in, in world history. You know, they're, they're there for oh, the man. taking and, uh, and, and you just don't know what's going to be in that shipment. But, uh, you know, they're allowing you the opportunity to try it uh, in a small portion. Uh, to see what you like. And so it lets you really curate your tastes and your uh, kind of hone in on what you're what you're interested in. And uh, and of course, if you like uh, like the tobacco you're trying, you can go invest in more. But it's always fun to expand your palate. Getting that new Tin Society box each month, uh, you know, it forces you to to open up to the next uh, the next thing. It's like, well, I'm going to try these tobaccos. I, I don't I don't you know think I would like this one, but gosh, they sent it to me. I'm going to try it. Oh, wait, that's really good. You know, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. And, and, and so you start kind of developing this new uh, greater palette because of what the folks there are doing. So, uh, tensociety.com, we encourage you to go there, sign up for their service. Uh, if you use the code Squire, uh, you get 20% off your first month's service. And, uh, and of course, uh, several of y'all have done that. You've uh, shown us pictures of, of that. And, uh, we, we highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and by the way, when, when you get your, uh, 10 society boxes in, do an unboxing, show us on Twitter. We Please love, do. Yeah. We'd love, to, love to share that back. Uh, a bunch, a bunch of folks will actually they'll hold up their Missouri Meerschaum pipe, uh, that they get for uh, signing up with 10 society along with the uh, along with their their month monthly uh, shipments so right i got this i'm smoking this list of country squire radio that's so awesome. trifecta <laughs> society.com again use the code squire for 20 percent off on your first month's service all right man listen to feedback Woo, we're running a little bit late tonight i know th this is the first as far as i can remember this is the first episode of country squire radio where i've finished an entire bowl wow. of pipe tobacco and i would relight my pipe but there's literally nothing to relight oh man so we we, we probably need to wrap it yeah, up yeah that's that's, that's definitely <laughs> our first well, of course we first have to uh, give a shout out to those giving us a shout out on itunes we've got badge 714 who says i like country squire because the discussion starts pretty quickly the hosts are friendly and unpretentious and they provide a lot of great info on pipes and tobaccos i'm now sold on country squire dude so kind thank you badge absolutely we, great. Do, we do try to uh we we do try to make sure that like from the gate you're getting some good content that's uh pipe and pipe tobacco related and whenever we fail in that one of us typically john david's pretty good to point out like yeah this has something to do with pipe tobacco you know, right to, right to pull us back on we're, we're complete idiots I, I i do like my my pretentious voice though i think i can pull that out occasionally but it's it's really it's, it's really close to the stewie griffin voice you know so i i can only pull that out in in very small proportion. You know that's not Stewie's real voice though, right? Ah, uh, you know about that, right? No, that, that that happened while you were out of the country. No, all right. Uh, there's what that, happened. Stewie Griffin. Spoilers. Stewie Griffin goes to a uh, 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 one of those people you sit down and you talk to about your problems. Counselor. Counselor. He goes into counselor, <laughs> and he reveals to his counselor that that's not his real voice. Really? And then reveals his real voice to said counsel. Okay, don't go any further. That's exactly where I will stop. Okay, so okay. I, I would, I implore you Excellent. to- Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, okay, yeah. Check good, that one out. good. Uh, it's one of those special Family Guy episodes where you're not sure if it's funny, brilliant, stupid, or serious. You know what I mean? Like kind of off-putting. You know, like, like the one where him and Brian are like in, locked in the room together for an entire episode, and like Brian's contemplating, you know, some serious decisions. They I don't remember that one. Uh -uh. Oh, this, this is some of the best episodes. Is it another good or worst episodes? It's kind of hard to say. <laughs> All right, next one is from Barry Winslow. What did Barry Winslow said? I'm in the J episode. Uh, let's see. I'm guessing that must be January. Uh, I'm in the January episode. We'll see. In the January episode, you talked about uh, there should be a blend called Grandma's Kitchen. Uh, Hearth and Home, which is a tobacco brand that originated in Albany, New York, uh, actually has an aromatic called Grandma's Kitchen. Uh, just was given a tender uh, from a friend at work. Um, uh, just just was given a tin of it from oh, a from yeah, a friend yeah. at work. Uh, sorry, the uh, verbiage is kind of mixed up here. Um, and uh, I'll let you know how it is after my first smoke. Love the show, guys. So uh, Barry says there is a Grandma's Kitchen tobacco. It's from Hearth and Home. Uh, he uh, is is trying it and is going to let us know uh, his review. And so that's great. Excellent. Excellent so much. So thank you all so much for that that feedback. And by the way, we love getting those emails in, those comments on Facebook, the tweets, of course, uh, and especially those iTunes reviews. If you've not headed over to iTunes and written us a review, we encourage you to do so. It's a great way to help out the show. It doesn't cost you a dime to do it. By the way, if you are willing to spend a few dimes to help support this show, we always know that, you know, the kind of the, the tobacco uh, uh, conversation, the tobacco community yeah. on the Internet can sometimes have a hard place to figure out where to hang its hat. And right. So right. In order to make sure that you always have that nice place 
to hang your hat, you need to support it. So <laughs> head over to patreon.com slash country squire radio, become a member of the international country squire radio pipe club. We actually have got some new squire members whose names are going up on the board. Uh, yeah. We'll read those off next episode. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we'd love to have you as part of the pipe club, or if you just want to uh, spend a buck, a buck, for our episode just to kind of show your love and show your support that's great as well again that's patreon.com slash country squire radio uh we also want to uh, keep up with you throughout the week you can follow us on twitter i'm at the real bow york i'm at john david cole or you can get us at the shop at at underscore country squire of course these shows handle is at squire radio and typically you can find that information at country squire radio.com however not today <laughs> uh but hopefully by the time this podcast goes out You'll be able to visit. technical difficulty, technical difficulty, yeah. man. We, we, we're under attack for some reason. All the more reason to support us at patreon.com slash country squire radio. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, but of course we do want you to enjoy the live show with us every Monday night. You can join us at eight 30 central time. That's six 30 Pacific, nine 30 Eastern. And that of course is at country squire radio.com. Well, man, it is Dude, so I had good. fun tonight, man. I was, you back. man, I came back. I'm freaking get to go home to my wife tonight and, and, Man, I've got a freaking coffee pipe and a, oh we, a bunch of really good whiskey. And gosh, hey, it's just fantastic. Can I leave the Chicago with you yes, and take absolutely. the Texas with me? <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't I don't know. It, it, <laughs> I, I don't think that's a one in, one out kind of thing. I, 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 I don't think that's a fair trade. I think it's fine. <laughs> Well, well, we'll decide this outside after the show. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go have a night. See you, Bo. All right, guys. Man, we had fun. Y'all, <laughs> it's always so good to spend Monday <laughs> evenings with you. It's great to uh, great to be back. I was so thankful to uh, hear from so many of you over the past couple of weeks and um and just all the all the uh congratulations and uh you know people well wishing and everything. It was really, really kind. But I tell you what, it's uh it's really good to be back in the saddle. Absolutely, so, man. Well, yep. we gotta pick all this stuff up because I gotta join up with the Squire Scallywag so we can go out voyage and assassinate skeletons on the seven seas. Kyarg! Be sure to press that parik. We get ship ship that parik. Or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> good night, y'all.